Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and peace be upon you all and welcome to a new episode of the Finding Truth podcast in the Marvels of Creation series. And today I'm very excited because this is our second episode and we'll be addressing a fascinating topic, which is the marvels of God's creation in the human eye. And I'm very pleased to have with me um, uh, Dr. Ahmad Goma who is um, a PhD a medical doctor in ophthalmology, which is the study of the human eye and the medicine of the human eye. Dr. Ahmed, welcome to the channel. And uh, I'm really uh, excited and uh, happy to have you here today. Thank you very much, Ahmed, for the introduction. And I'm really happy as well to be with you today. So um, let's um, have a little more about your background because you have um, all those terms in the CV uh, that are all medical terms. And uh, maybe you can give us a little brief about um, your history and your current uh, whereabouts and where you are teaching and um, uh, where you're practicing your medicine. Thank you, Ahmed. So I'm a graduate of Cairo University uh, in 1997. I had my uh, basic training and uh, first at Cairo University, Kasserlaini Medical School. And then uh, I came to the UK in 2005, where I had a master's degree from London University. Uh, then I specialized in the anterior segment of the eye, where I had a specialized fellowship in the cornea. As we will know in a few minutes, the cornea is the front of the eye. It is the clear window of the eye. And okay. uh, since then, uh, I actually am practicing in the UK. Uh, right now, I'm practicing in... Uh, Blackpool Victoria Hospital, where Blackpool is in the northwest of England. It is by the sea, and I'm working there now. And I specialize, as I mentioned previously, mainly in the cornea and the anterior segment of the eye. As a side, part of the interest, or was mainly part of my interest throughout life, is actually education, international ophthalmology. Uh, during my career, I actually worked in many parts of the world. I I was previously the medical director of the Flying Eye Hospital, where we've been many parts of the world. We, we shared an education for ophthalmologists, and that's another, another interesting part of the career so far. Great. So you have um, studied the eye academically, and also you are a practicing doctor, right? Indeed, yes. So let's, uh, let's hear from you, your experience with the eye, and, and why you think the eye is something that can bring somebody to the uh, belief and appreciation of God's uh, uh, grandeur and, uh, and his magnificence of his creation. Thanks, Ahmed. So um, I might be biased when we speak about eyes. Um, the, the eye is for me uh, throughout, since I was graduated in 1997, was, as I mentioned, my part of the practice, everyday practice. Maybe uh, when we started uh, working with eyes, uh, I was all the time impressed with the beauty of the eye. And uh, this was mainly, uh, I think, the main reason for, for me to specialize in this very, very precious part of our human body. So um, this, uh, when we spoke about the idea of this intro uh, presentation today and uh, and when we try to approach this topic today, I even more was more surprised with the marvels of the eye. And uh, looking into the eye from a different perspective this time, the creation of the God, uh, and what happened since we started looking into the eye as practitioner and how we look at it in a different perspective was something really interesting to me. I might be biased, as, we, as I mentioned, but uh, that's what we will see during the topic. So... Uh, and the first slide for us today, if we see the verse of Quran, "Inna khalaqna al-insana min nutfatin amshajin nabtali, fajalnahu samian basira." So uh, the translation for this, which uh, again I find not giving the the verse the the whole power of it, it says, "Indeed, we created humans from a mixed fluid of sperm drop, testing him. Then we made him hearing and seeing." So it is an actual bliss of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just being able to hear and see um, it, 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 it draws one's attention that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the creation of the human from the uh, from the rutha from the, the, from the first drop 
he then immediately refers to the hearing and the uh, vision. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, he's, as, as if he's, he's, he's telling us, go there and, and you'll find something special. Exactly, exactly right. And I think that was uh, something for me to find out when I was preparing this presentation today. So, um, so let's start off together. We, yeah. As we mentioned, it is the the beautiful eye, and the, you can you can look into the into different eyes we have on the screen now. Look how beautiful is the eye. As I mentioned previously, I might be biased in saying that, but I think you will all agree with me that it is the most beautiful organ of the human body. Um, if you just look into the eye, this will have a lot of things happening to you. Um, you will have your own impression sometimes of the person. Sometimes you have your impression of something else. Uh, for, for us as a culture or for different cultures across the world, the, the eye is usually the uh, window for the soul. Uh, they call it the poems usually refer to the eye for the kind of emotions that you can get from looking into someone's eye. So it is actually something very, very special and at the same time, very beautiful. Agree. So uh, just if we start looking into the eye as, as we can see it as an organ, uh, in this slide here, I just want you to look into the size of the eyeball or the, or the globe. So the, the eyeball is, if we compare it to, to the, if you look to the left of the slide, we have, this is a quarter dollar current, uh, the coin. It is about 25 millimeters in size. And if you are familiar with the coin, it is something very, very small. You can put it in your wallet, you can put it in the pocket, and then you look for it. So it's something really small. This gives you an average of the size of the eyeball. This is the, uh, the, anti the diameter of the eyeball. It's about 24 millimeters, which is 2.5 centimeters in size. And just to give you an idea of how it compares even to the sizes of the fruits, if a cranberry, which is even smaller than a small lemon or lime, it is about two centimeters, so it is really a small organ. Sometimes we don't appreciate how it is small because it is there. We take it for granted all the time, but it is actually small and beautiful at the same time. So uh, in, in this video here, uh, this is um, uh, this is just an animation. I, I know that the uh, labeling of the video is in German. But it is a very interesting video to see the, the eyeball and we go through it, uh, the anatomy of the actual eyeball. And just to give you a, an idea of how the eye looks from inside. So now we are looking inside the globe and the part we are looking inside the eye now is the retina, which is a sensitive part of the eye. And as we go to the front, we are going inside the globe to near the lens where we all the rays come through the pupil. So all we're watching now is actually is still inside the 2.5 centimeters, 2.4 centimeters size wise. And all the structures we're seeing now is the what constitutes the anatomy of the eye or the structure of the eye. So here we're having a, a look for the, uh, the inside of the eye from the back. And now this is through the uh, pupil. And this is the retina at the back of the eye. I see. This is a section now. This is a cut section through the globe, yes. I think this is, it will come at the end again with the whole globe, uh, the uh, cut section through it. So we can see the structure from the front backwards. Uh, this is just the wall of the eye, as we can see from outside, it is the white part of the sclera. Those are like the muscles that are uh, controlling the muscles it. attach it to the eyeball. Hmm. 
and this is a look from the front backwards. So this is the whole uh, eyeball. So the eyeball, as we can see it here, is um, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, so here, if we go into more details about the uh, structure of the eye from the inside, after seeing this uh, very short video, uh, an animation video about the eye structure, um, if we go from the front backwards, so this is if we are cutting the eyeball into, uh, like we are doing a, a cross section across the, the eyeball from the front backwards, the first structure that we encounter is the cornea of the eye, as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, the cornea is the clear window of the eye. Um, it is exactly like your uh, watch glass. You can see your dials, but you cannot see the actual glass. That's essentially what's happening here. You can see the iris, which is the color part of the eye, but you cannot see the clear window. So if you're looking into someone's eye, you won't be able to see a cornea and you say, this is a cornea. All what you can see, you say someone's eyes is green, it is blue, so you can see through the cornea here, you can see the iris, but you cannot see the actual cornea. In between the, the two, there is a space. This space is called the anterior chamber or the front of the eye, or we can call it the uh, front chamber of the eye. So that's the, cornea, the cornea is like the, the, the glass thing that we, is the, the, the external surface of, of, of the eye, right? Absolutely right. So the, the, the transparent one. It is external surface. It is clear, completely clear, mm, and yeah. uh, uh, it, it is uh, uh, it is in the outer layer of the eye. So the outer layer, the outer layer of the eyeball together, is if we start from the back here. Sorry about that. If mm -hmm. we start from the back, the 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 eyeball starts here at the at the back near the optic nerve or the nerve of the eye. This whole circle is made of sclera or the white part of the eye. If you look into someone's eye, it is. There is a, a big white part on each side. That's what mm. we call the sclera of the eye. Now, the sclera at the front is kind of continued into the clear window, which uh, kind of intermingle with it completely or mix with it. You cannot notice the transition between being white part into a clear window. So this is, it, it is the outer protective part of the globe. But at the same time, the front of it is modified within the same type of collagens, the same type of proteins, to be clear. So instead of being white and opaque, it becomes clear to allow the light to fall into the eye. As, the, the, as we go through the eye, as I mentioned, there is a front chamber just so you mean, the eye. You mean the tissue is just a, one continuous tissue, but suddenly it comes clear to allow light to come in. It's not like a part that is plugged there. It's just a continuous tissue, but suddenly it becomes transparent. Correct. So it is a continuous um. tissue. It is strong. It doesn't have any weakness in the transition. And this, there is a change of the curvature of the tissue. There is a change of the uh, clarity of the tissue because of the nature of the fibers, nature of the proteins. And it allows, as I mentioned, to the front of the eye. This cornea here, the diameter of the cornea at the front is about 11 millimeters in diameter. So uh, this is like a circle, a button at the front of the sclera, which is uh, hardly one centimeter. So uh, uh, in size. Now, as we go through the eye, as I mentioned, behind the iris, which is the color part of the eye, we have a lens. This lens is clear. Uh, it has a front and backward, as we can see. Uh, this lens is suspended inside the eye with some kind of uh, uh, support, or you can call it a ligament from each side. Of course, here, this is a section, but this lens, as we saw from the video, it is a, a whole desk. It is a circle. And this circle is by convex. Convex, of course, at the surface of the lens, as we maybe you remember from the lessons of the, the physics that we had in the past, we have two types of lenses, the concave and the convex. So the lens that we have in the eye is a convex lens. And uh, as we go inside the eye globe, the eye globe is not empty. The globe is full of a jelly-like material. If you imagine the egg white, the egg white is clear, gelatinous, and it is uh, viscous. 
that's exactly similar to the vitreous body or what we call the vitreous humerus. It is inside the globe. So the globe is not empty. And this globe is not empty and it has a pressure. And this pressure is maintained mainly by having the jelly in the eye and by fluid, which is in circulating inside this very small organ that we discussed, 2.4 centimeter in, in diameter. Now, this, just to give you an idea, this uh, slide here about... The fluid, the fluid inside the eye actually moves? It does move. It is actually... Uh, if we can see here, and I'm, I'm not sure if you can see my arrows moving. This yeah, yeah, we see it. This part mm -hmm. here is called the ciliary body. This ciliary body mm -hmm. is responsible for producing all the fluid inside the eye. This fluid secrete, uh, produced here, it then mm -hmm. travels across around the lens, goes through the pupil, and then gets drained from the angle here. So this is a turnover, continuous process, fluid produced from here, going through the pupil, and then gets drained into here. And this is and this, this yeah. fluid is, is the same as the fluid inside the eye? This is the fluid inside the eye. This is the, we have two, two as, as I mentioned, two, two main uh, uh, parts or partitions, mm. the front and the back. Mm. And we usually refer to the back, what is behind the lens. And this is full of the vitreous jelly. It is a jelly material. But the front mm. is full of fluid. This fluid is called the aqueous humerus. So, Equus as in fluid, it's all our words are usually coming from Latin. Any mm -hmm. equus is just fluidy substance. So this fluidy substance is produced here in the ciliary body. And then it travels across the pupil and gets drained into here. Okay. And this like lubricates the outer... The outer. No, this is not to do with the surface. This is uh, uh, what's okay. speaking now. We are always it remains inside, inside, but it is very clear. It is really clear. It is, yes, it is inside and it's clear. The main function of it is, as maybe we later we will uh, we'll know mm. about that, but the main function is to give nutrients to different parts of the eye. As we uh -huh. will know across the, uh, uh, as we speak about the eye as an organ, the eye is, this part here doesn't have any blood vessels, and this is for a reason, to make it clear. So there is nothing to bring the nutrients into it. So how to get nutrients yeah. to reach this part here? you need something to carry the nutrients and get it to transfer through it. So that's what happens through this clear fluid. So this is one of the main functions of this fluid. The other thing is, as I mentioned, it maintained the eye pressure because this eye is a ball. If, you, yeah. if your eyeball is not full of substance, something, it will get deflated. So it will, you have to keep the eyeball structure all the time and this pressure has to be maintained. So the, the maintenance of the pressure is a balance between the fluid which comes from here and the fluid which gets drained into here. Wow, subhanAllah. So, so if there is an increase in the, in the fluid, this system uh, or a decrease, this, this ciliary body flu uh, system will, will always adjust it, right? Absolutely. So we have to, many mechanisms to adjust the, uh, the, 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 the balance between the two. But as we know, some people, they have something called the glaucoma. And the glaucoma mm -hmm. is high pressure in the eye. So the pressure in the eye means that the drainage here starts not to be as good as it used to be. And this when glaucoma starts to happen. Okay. And this fluid goes anywhere. It, it provides the nutrients. So it is consumed continuously, right? And then Very a different good, yeah. one is produced, right? Correct. So it, this fluid is in a, in a, in, in a kind of uh, uh, continuous... Uh, uh, turn over around the these structures here, so the cornea can get the nutrition needed for its functions, for its metabolism. All the time, all our tissues are need energy, need nutrients to survive, and that's how they get the how we get it to the cornea and to the lens, without the need for blood vessels to come into here and block the vision. Because you mean. You mean that the lens is actually a living, a living thing? Absolutely. That, that, if anything, right. if we speak about the eye now, as we will also see from the, 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 uh, how it is formed, the only structure in the body which keeps growing after maturity is the lens. So wow. the lens keeps growing as we get older. It doesn't stop growing at all. The lens is clear and it is a living tissue which doesn't stop growing all the time. Subhanallah. So we are we are seeing through a lens that is a living lens. Lens. Yes. So a, a, clear, a, living, a clear piece. A clear piece of like something like looks like glass, but it is actually living and it's 
metabolizing, like it's eating uh, nutrients and consuming nutrients. Yeah. And this is this is really mind blowing. I I I, ne I never knew that. A lens yeah. is actually a living it, it, thing. It is living and it is increasing in thickness as well. So as I mentioned, yeah. all our body, all our organs stops growing after we get into the maturity. But the lens is one, the only structure which keeps growing. It doesn't stop growing as we get older. Okay. Are we going to have more details about those little muscles uh, attached or ligaments I, attached I to them? It's, it's more to do with the functions later on, as we said. Okay. The serious might come into how the eye operate functions, but this is just to give an idea about the size of the globe and uh, how it looks from inside. I just want also to this slide before we go. This mm -hmm. is everything in the eye, as when it is, was studied later on, of course, and it just, I think, uh, earlier this century and the last century, that Mm -hmm. uh, the each each measurement makes a huge difference for the physics of the eye. Now, mm. the optics of the eye is highly related to the curvature of the different structure within the eye, and not only that, or the we have different uh, what we for the physics maybe also uh, some background something called the refractive index. So the refractive index of the fluid inside the eye and how the light ray can change from going from air to fluid mm -hmm. and then from fluid to vitreous to the jelly this mm -hmm. all makes a huge difference for the rays to fall exactly where it wanted to be on the fovea or the back of the eye so that's why the measurements here are very very specific as we can see and just 0.1 something of millimeter will make a difference which makes you wearing a glass maybe someone wearing a glass because a difference of 0.11 something and someone else is not wearing glass just because of the, the this kind of difference is not happening. So, so the properties the properties of the cornea and the fluid and the lens and the vitreous material all together work so that the light ray will go inside and refract and refract and refract and hit the right spot so that we have the focused vision. This is what you're saying. It's not only a matter of the lens. Correct. It's the whole thing. This is the whole optical system of the eye, yes. And all the measurements that's mentioned in this slides here, this mm. radius of curvature, the R is the radius of curvature of the front, of the back. Mm -hmm. So the cornea, despite being very thin, the cornea thickness is 0.5 millimeter. So it is less than millimeter in thickness. Mm. And despite that, the curvature of the front is different from the curvature of the back. Wow. Yes. So the cornea, the cornea itself is a lens on its own. Oh, yes. It is the, the, the cornea is sharing to one-third of the refractive power of the eye. Ah, that's why when somebody no, makes a LASIK... The cornea is sharing to two-thirds. The lens is wow. sharing to one-third. Yes. So the, uh, that's why when somebody does a LASIK, this can correct his vision because that's the LASIK correct. actually operates yes. on the cornea itself. Uh, yeah. Minimal, minimal change on the power of the cornea can adjust the vision for someone. SubhanAllah. Okay. So... Now, we come to the uh, question that usually we, we keep asking all the time now. What, what is the megapixel of the, of the eye? So <laughs> we, we, keep, we keep getting the uh, now this, the camera or this device is very high megapixel or we keep listening all to the new models of coming every day. So what is the megapixel of the eye? Okay. So how, how high is the megapixel of our own cameras that we have given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So... They, this is just an estimate of how the, how much megapixel we have in each eye. So uh, this is 576 megapixels, so 576 megapixels in each of the eyes. We have two of those in, in our human body. And 576 megapixel. Correct. And wow. I don't think they even estimated the drive because even whatever they use, uh, they, they, there's something usually beyond what they can uh, determine. So this is kind of maybe uh, uh, estimate as well. I think they, they might come later and say it is higher than that, but this is, I think this is the highest they can estimate right now. And, 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 and this estimation, uh, this estimation is based on what? Uh, capturing the image and trying to guess they, because they, we cannot? Hmm? They, the resolution of the eye is actually be measured by when the light ray falls on the photoreceptor of the eye, so the mm -hmm. angle of the uh, the angle of uh, the uh, uh, falling into each of the photoreceptors 
and the space or the distance between each photoreceptors, it's what defines this uh, 576 megapixels of the eye. So in other words, the, the sensitive film of the eye and the number of cones that we have in our eyes, which gives us the resolution of the eye. And I think that's how they estimate it because we know now the number of cones, we know the number of rods, and the, the cones that can, how many, the, the, uh, the, the resolution that can be achieved is based on that. Okay, 576 megapixels, and I think, you know, uh, phones now with great cameras and cameras, they are not even close to be anything like this at all. <laughs> exactly. And this is happening within 7.5 grams. The eyeball weight is 7.5 grams. And as I mentioned, the, and the, from anterior to back, it is 2.4 centimeters in size. So 7.5 grams. And you have all this collection of lenses, the double Correct. layer of the cornea, and then the fluid, and then another uh, lens, and then a fluid. So all those stages, you know, you see, we see those professional cameras with this huge uh, uh, thing in front of it, having the lens collection, and all of this is in seven grams in, in something yeah. small as a just, to, to just from what you're saying, this is the latest available now. I was checking online to see where they are right now with the cameras. I never mm -hmm. came across this until I was preparing this presentation. And wow. this is a camera which is... Uh, uh, the, uh, the, it is for 43,000 uh, 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 sterling pounds. Wow. Uh, it, it is 100 megapixels. And uh, the weight is 2.1 kilograms. As wow. you can see the size, <laughs> it, 13 centimeters by 15 by 20. And they are very proud that they produce this now. And it is uh, 100 megapixels. Wow, and it's not even 3D. <laughs> it's not even 3D, and we don't have two of these. And yeah, because you need two of them. If... You need two of them for the 3D, right? Exactly. And uh, you cannot autofocus. You cannot switch between the night mode and the light mode. You have to do the adjustment yourself. Uh, this is, uh, you have one of, uh, or you have two and e one on each side. They are not connecting to each other. They're not speaking to each other. Even if you get two of these, put them together and ask them to work together to achieve a single task. So, so two of those would be like 130 or something, $120,000. Yeah. And they are not even, they are not even a fifth of what the eye can do, like one sixth or something. Absolutely. Absolutely. And wow. we, and then our kind of search for the perfection all the time, they would keep developing. They would keep matching or trying to reach to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But of course, this is... And it needs maintenance. It doesn't generate its own fluid. It needs maintenance. It needs electricity from the outside. It needs... Uh, and it is... Together, it's like four and something kilograms, which is like, uh, yeah. I don't know, thousands of times or something as I'm heavy as... I'm not sure about eye. the whole head uh, weight. <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking about maybe the head altogether with all what is inside the head. Maybe it will be lighter than that so who knows yeah, yeah. subhanallah, yeah. subhanallah. subhanallah. so uh, as we we were speaking about the creation of the eye i think uh, we this uh, first uh, uh, talk today is to look into this beautiful organ or this the beauty of the creation how mm -hmm. this organ came into existence from the stage where we were just one cell and then divided into two and then four and then uh, 16 and, and so on. And then you ended up with a structure, as we mentioned, the front of it is different from the back, despite the fact that both of them are composed of the, exactly the same protein and of the same structure. So to the left here, we can see the slide where we started with the fertilization process from the first day. And then we keep dividing the cells into until we kind of reach by day 12 to start forming something which will look into, uh, uh, start forming three different layers. And this is the basis for the any structure in the body. So we ended up with something called the ectoderm and endoderm and in the middle, a layer called the mesoderm. So the ectoderm is the outside layer and usually referred to all the structure that comes from outside the body, mainly the skin and organs on the surface. 
And then the inner layer is the endoderm. With, this is mainly gives the structures to the gastro, uh, gastric system, to the stomach, the intestines. And in between, there is a structure called the mesoderm, which we will know that it actually forms mainly muscles, blood vessels, and some organs like the kidneys. So uh, from this stage here, now after fertilization, across this stage is where we just forming a mass of cells. This mass of cells starts to split into three different layers. And at this stage of forming three different layers by day 12, we will now start seeing that this surface layer of ectoderm will in kind of forming a, a pouch within it. So it starts to uh, fold, as we can see here, into a, a structure within the ectoderm. So this was one layer here. Then this layer will form, starting to form the neural groove. And this wow. neural groove will close and it will start to form the neural tube. And this neural tube is will be the basis for the structure of all the nervous system that we have in our body. So it mm -hmm. was a single layer started with the ectoderm, but this ectoderm within itself formed another structure, which we will start calling it now the neuroectoderm because it is a specialized form of the ectoderm and mm -hmm. it is meant to be forming the nervous system. Mm -hmm. So the eye. So the eye usually comes around the eight day of 22, which is um, uh, just maybe uh, a third week or okay. maybe third, third week after uh, fertilization. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this time, the, the next to the day 22, you can see the size of the, uh, of the embryo. The embryo is 2, point, 2 to 3 millimeters altogether from the front backwards. Wow. So in 2 to 3 millimeters, the uh, neural tube, now the neural tube, as we discussed, formed inside the ectoderm and it starts to close. So the upper hmm. part of the neural tube close and the lower part of the neural tube close. And within the uh, what we call usually cephalic or the the, the, the the upper part where our head is, and there is hmm. a lower part where the end of the embryo is. So at the upper part, this neural tube starts to form a kind of two, two small buds. No, like mm. at the at the at the front of this two at the front of this neural tube, two small branches come, like very mm. small branches. We call it the optic vesicle. And this optic vesicle is just if the tube is there, and this part here is what we call our forebrain, this bud will come to the side and will start growing outwards. Wow. And this is the first, the very first structure of the uh, of the eye just a very tiny branch which comes as if you are putting a small seed and this seed will grow into something now this branch will grow longer mm -hmm. and as it grow longer it will meet what we spoke about a minute ago is called the ectoderm again so the ectoderm is still on the surface part of it went inside and it starts to form the neural tube but the neural tube itself is growing backwards again growing toward it again in a, mm. in a very active and interaction between the two. So each time tissues touch each other, there is usually interaction which ends up in a structure which was not there before. So mm -hmm. this, this bud is growing, the ectoderm is here, they meet. Once they meet, the front of the ectoderm is kind of, as you can see here, starts to grow inside the cup. So the cup goes around it and it forms what we will be the first structure of the lens. Wow. Now, yes. Uh, now this bud is growing and this bud is growing connected to the brain. So it is a part of the brain. Still, it is part of the brain where the all the, uh, the forebrain, where the brain is, is connected with two branches. But these branches are formed now of two layers. A layer which is the inner of the cup and the layer is the outer of the cup. And inside it, now this is part of the ectoderm. At this stage, this lens needs blood vessels to grow because we mm -hmm. need we need blood vessels for tissues to grow. While we are in the embryo stage, this lens, despite being clear, and it will be clear later on, but it has once blood supply where it would, would, would start to grow. There was a blood supply coming through the cup, but we oh. will see later that this blood vessel will disappear and it mm. will be completely clear again. Now, the lens starts... Once it starts inside the cup, the lens separates from the surface again. Again, another wow. interaction is happening. 
So the lens was engulfed inside the cup, separates inside it. Now the surface layer goes back again. It doesn't stop growing. The surface layer is still there. And the surface layer starts to form, as you can see here, a, a, a groove within a, a, like a, a recess in here. This groove starts to form into a structure. You can see that. This is the mm -hmm. form later on the lid, the upper lid, and this is the lower lid. Now we are speaking about a section across the globe. So this yeah. is the upper lid, this is the front of the eye, and this is the lower lid. Now, this lid um, is kind of open now, as we can see that. This lid mm. will, will now fuse again. And I want you to remember wow. the word fuse, because this mm. lid is completely closed, fused completely for this stage mm. now. The so eye the, eye, the, eye, the eye has something like skin in front of it. Correct. It's, at, at this at stage here. Now we are speaking about week eight, where the okay. embryo is 2 to 30 millimeters altogether lens from front to backwards. So 230 two millimeters is about three centimeters. So you can imagine. Wow. It's, it is shorter <laughs> than your uh, uh, finger. Uh, index finger. Of course, yeah. your index, the first to actually two parts of your, uh, the phalanx of the uh, index finger, small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's two to the three size. meter, the whole, the whole baby is two to three meter, the embryo. Correct. And the eye then, the eye then is, 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 <laughs> it's nothing. Exactly. <laughs> Sophistication is happening in this very small part. Comparison to the size, you can tell what is the size. I don't know it exactly, but yes, everything is yeah. in comparison. Now, if the if the actual body now is 180 centimeters, and the actual yeah. globe is 2.4, if you take the size, I'm not sure how it will be it at this stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So uh, this is a, a nice video, just uh, showing all what we discussed in a dynamic. Uh, wow, let's maximize that. Okay. By day 27, the optic vesicle starts to form in the neuroectoderm, and the lens placode forms in the surface ectoderm. The primary vitreous then extends to the future posterior lens as the hyaloid artery. Over the next two days, the neuroectoderm invaginates to form the bilayered optic cup, and the surface ectoderm invaginates to form the lens vesicle. By day 37, the optic cup becomes more defined. The inner layer forms the neural retina, and the outer layer forms the retinal pigment epithelium. The surface ectoderm has fully invaginated to form the lens and is separated from the future corneal epithelium. The posterior lens cells grow forward as the primary lens fibers, which will form the embryonal nucleus. Next, the neural crest cells form additional corneal layers in two waves. The first wave forms the future corneal endothelium. The second wave forms the future corneal stroma. By day 44, the conjunctival fornix and the eyelids start to form. Over the next 11 days, the eyelids then come together and fuse, maintaining a conjunctival sac. By the fourth month, folds of the ciliary processes appear. The iris sphincter develops, the hyaloid system starts to regress, and Schlem's canal appears. At month five, the eyelids start to separate, and the eye has really taken shape. You can see the layers of the cornea, an anterior chamber, the lens, the sclera, the choroid, and the extraocular muscles. So this uh, was a video just uh, showing... Oh, that was uh, marvelous. All of this is happening and the eye is forming behind yes. the scene and then suddenly at the end we have an eye. Correct. And I just wanted to show you in, in animation what is happening and it is, it is kind of a, a process which a, a very dynamic one. It is not like a step by step. It is something happening in synchrony and it is happening 
uh, with a meaning and with a determination to do something very specific and very functional. And each single step will lead into something that if fails, that all the subsequent steps will not be possible. So it, it is something that is really uh, amazing. And uh, uh, subhanAllah, this is uh, beyond uh, even, you know, the uh, kind of we can comprehend all this together and put it all together now as we know it because we kind of studied that. But it is, as we can just see from a diagram, this is something yeah. happening, cells forming, cells disappearing. A blood vessel comes across the globe to feed the lens and then it will disappear. And then uh, uh, the lid closes in order to open later. So the, the, the skin on the eye was not open. The skin on the eye was closed. And then the skin opened just before we, 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 the birth happens. Yes, around five, fifth month or the sixth month, the lid splits. And then we start having the globe as we know it. Absolutely. Marvelous. Subhanallah. And yeah. the, the, this thing of the, of, the, of, <laughs> of the blood vessel going and then just doing, doing its function and then getting dissolved and goes somewhere is, is really mind-blowing. Absolutely. Subhanallah. Yes. So uh, I, I, I was actually, um, uh, this uh, dua, when you, uh, when you do sujood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you do the uh, sujood and you, 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 if you know this dua, and I think, in a du'a ma'thur, and we know uh, some we, we heard about it. And uh, so in the du'a, we say, Allahumma laka sajat wa bika amant wa laka aslamt sajad wajhi lilladhi khalaqahu wa sawarahu wa shakka sam'ahu wa basarahu. Tabarak Allahu ahsan al khalaqin. The word, uh, as, as you can see, this, of course, I'm taking translations, but uh, w the, when I started to look into the translations, sometimes it's not giving, of course, the uh, uh, Quran versus the whole of its meaning, as we, yeah. especially if you if you look into the specific words, and this specific words here, I would like to discuss was the fissure. So uh, yeah. in eyes, we have the uh, opening of the eye between the lids. This this is this is this is this is a well known prayer um, uh, that the Prophet peace be upon him uh, used to say, right. Yes. Correct. When, when he prostrates, when he does sujood. When so, he prostrates. And this is... From Sahih Muslim. This is from Sahih Muslim, according to your quotation. From Sahih Muslim. And it was actually... Uh, uh, I was looking it up. It was even Sayyidina Ali and uh, uh, Sayyida Aisha. It, so it was it was kind of a, a very strong... Uh, 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 to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while he was prostrating to Allah. But the, the word that usually that came to my mind all the time when I was t studying embryology uh, for my uh, uh, ophthalmology is the word shak, shak uh, yeah. that a prophet used for it. Mm -hmm. Because shak uh, is as a K, they say here uh, in the translation, this is not actually what should be the translation as uh, we went yeah. to translate it into English. Because yeah. uh, shak is yeah. actually a fissure. And yeah. we call, we call like, the... Cut it we, open. The one who has cut my eyes open. Exactly. The one yeah. who cut his, my eyes open. Mm -hmm. And that's the eye when, uh, when, you, when you have the fissure happening across the globe. We call it actually palpebral fissure. This is the English word. And this is the, the most professional word for use for our practice every day. And, and this, this happens at what time? Again? The fissure happens around the fifth month, as we can see around the video. So they just... Around the fifth month of the embryogenesis, while the, the fetus is in the uterus, the, mm. the, 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 the fissure happens. Now, what is very amazing about the process of creation of the eye, subhanAllah, is as happens in any other organ. But you know that every single step of creation that we mentioned, if so it fails, just be, before before we go to the next thing, so the Prophet peace be upon him used a word that is you know exactly corresponding to the scientific word we use today to describe what happens during embryogenesis Correct. concerning the opening Correct. of the eye to the external world. A fissure happens. Shakka. Shakka and, uh, and by yeah. the way, the the uh, the ear hmm. is also happening through something called otic vesicle. So all what we discussed now. Uh, regarding the eye, uh, the ear is also otic. It's otic. We have the optic vesicle, and otic refers to the ear. 
and it also starts as a, a groove happening within the the head and which creates a shock within the the head so the uh, word, the word shock is very specific to the eye uh, as i can show you the ev with evidence here this are the two young babies um, hmm. fully, to, sadly sadly they are born without the fissure happening and this uh -huh. is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing us you know this process works perfectly but you can see this process sometimes doesn't work perfectly for you to know that this is actually a process that happened this is a clue for you to see that this process is happening one two three four for you to follow the clues this is an eye crypt of salmos we call it this is crypt of salmos so crypto as you hear the cryptocurrencies now crypto mm -hmm. is hidden so uh -huh. crypto salmos, the eye is hidden the the, the the child is born with the lid not being fissured there is no shock happened Subhanallah. So, and this 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 child now will need a kind of operation to to open up. Yes. So this child will, if if you find the globe behind it, because yeah. as we can, as I mentioned uh, previously, the problem is if one step doesn't happen, the subsequent wow. steps in the creation of what is happening behind it sometimes is not complete. So okay. for these babies now, even if we open the fissure, or if we create a fissure then sometimes there is no globe or a very small non-functioning globe. So sadly, most of these uh, children are not seen. All right. All right. SubhanAllah. So uh, uh, the minute ago, I mentioned that each single step of creation will manifest itself in a, a presentation. And I don't want to be kind of graphic presentation for you with these pictures. <laughs> I know seeing children with some forms deformities will make you feel uh, bad yeah. about them but ag again the uh, marvelous creation that happens it gives you a clue that the size is should be uh, the perfect size that we have all the time size can be big size can be small size the uh, pupil can be perfectly round or the pupil can be a fissure like that the, so mm -hmm. the pupil didn't fuse as we all have so this is mm -hmm. still open here that we call uh, a coloboma or part missing in the eye now the mm -hmm. lens is supposed to be separating from the cornea and a space forming but in this patient here or many of the uh, not many it is a rare problem anyway but as you mm -hmm. can see the lens is still attached to the back of the cornea at the back wow. so there is no space forming so so those uh, those are the steps that happen to billions exactly. and billions and billions of people and we are completely unaware of this and we're little babies inside our mother's wombs and those things just happen guided by how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and because he has taken all those steps to completion and to perfection it is only due that we thank him for this and praise him for this just like the prophet peace be upon exactly. him does exactly. while he's prostrating yeah. And I can see that, that this is kind of if you if you have a process working and mm. if I tell you that this process has different steps, as we can tell in any kind of uh, systematic approach. And I tell you that this one, two, three, four, five, and this this is what how it happens. And I show you in each step if this didn't work perfectly, how it will manifest, how it will be, uh, how you will see it, how you will analyze what was the problem and you, how you will find out what's happening. So this is essentially we can see with our eyes because this all this con kind of congenital problem that we can see, it just tells you that there this is the process that you know now, the embryogenesis. But this embryogenesis, mm -hmm. which is happening every day in how many millions of people every every single day, works without any mistake, which corrects itself. But I'm just giving you a clue now that if it doesn't work, how it will manifest. Yeah. SubhanAllah. So, as we mentioned, just uh, uh, so uh, the other thing I came across, which was uh, uh, again, uh, he is the one who created for you hearing, eyesight, and heart, uh, yet little are thanks you give. Uh, I think, again, this is uh, not giving the uh, Quranic verse its actual uh, beauty with the word ansha. Uh, yeah, Incha is creating from uh, nothing and it's creating with a structure, creating with perfection. You make a plan and then you... Yeah, uh, Incha is like constructed. 
exactly constructed yeah. thing absolutely yeah. yeah constructing after you make a plan and after you uh, see it and then you you do it so it is not uh, just uh, you know created this yeah. mm. yes uh, subhanallah so this is now this is surprise which is happening yeah, charles down the uh, father of evolution yeah. He, when he came to the when he came to the eye, what did he say? Hmm. He say he said to suppose that the eye could come, uh, could uh, the, the eye uh, could have been formed by natural selection seems I freely confess confess absurd in the highest possible degree, and this was his actually a quote that used from Darwin. <laughs> I was really surprised to read it, and uh, yeah. The debate about this uh, quote that he used that uh, later on there was an article written by someone who is a specialized in zoology and he was making counter argument about that that Darwin is made it as an opening for people to discuss it further with them and make a debate after it. So I even read his article and uh, uh, trying to find what is his argument about that. But this was really surprising to see. So the father of evolution is saying that I, I confess this is the eye in specific is completely absurd to the highest possible degree to say that it came by natural selection. Yeah, actually just looking at what happens during embryonic development yeah. and this planning and everything just fits in place and the smallest error due to whatever uh, chemical abnormality, uh, anything that uh, the mother uh, gets exposed to, whatever, genetic disorder, whatever, any 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 single small thing causes a malfunctioning eye and then somebody in his right mind thinking that this is a process uh, that, that occurs due to random mutation and natural selection acting upon it, I think it's really absurd, just as <laughs> Darwin himself says. Correct, yes. Yes, and this was uh, an amazing quote for that. So... Uh, I don't know what is the, the basis for that, but I found this and I think... Uh, to be very specific, I cannot say that exactly 40 subsystems are working together in the eye, maybe more, by the way. But it is just this cartoon to show you that the human eye needs about 40 subsystems all working together and in harmony with each other. Logically, they all had to appear instantly together or we would all be blind. So it the, the the issue the word is the uh, dynamic interaction between between all the structures and all the functions within this very tiny beautiful organ to give you the function that you need and the time you need it by the way you need it to uh, lead your life in a being uh, basir being having the sight uh, the the bliss of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not being a blind creature moving not seeing the the beauty of the life and not being able to interact with other people around you. So 40 yeah. subsystems all working together in harmony. And if some, if one of the systems is not working, they, we all be, be blind now because we want all the systems to be working interactively without any interruptions to be able to do that. So actually, if it was, in my opinion, if it was um, left to natural selection, the odds are that uh, any of this will not work and then this eye would be a redundant organ that should be taken away actually by natural selection because having an organ that has no function makes no sense. It's a loss of energy. So uh, if it was for natural selection, we shouldn't have any eyes <laughs> because okay, exactly. no matter how many times it tries to select, something will and not have, work. Have the, 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 uh, the, this, uh, <laughs> the sight, not only being able to see. I think yeah. the word sight is more deep as basar and uh, ru'ya. So, so the sight is being able to see and understand and yes. interact with all what you do every day. Yes. So yes. now, back to Charles' argument mm -hmm. that uh, this is what was mentioned in this article. The guy wrote about the counter argument because he himself believes in evolution. Mm -hmm. So he said that the, you took a part of what Darwin wrote and you took it and you took it as a quote to support your talks all the time that the creation took place and no evolution, but you didn't take the whole argument from Darwin. Darwin was just making a teaser to you so you can listen to what he is going to say next. And this is essentially what he said next. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> so what he's saying here, that reason tells me 
that if numerous grade gradations from simple and perfect imperfect eye to one complex and perfect can be shown to exist, each grade being useful to its possessor, as is, central, as is certainly the case. So what he's saying is that the, there was a gradual process that happens and it is needed. If further the eye ever varies and the variation be inherited, as is likely, likewise certainly the case, and if such variation should be useful to any animal under a changing condition, then the difficulty of believing that a perfect and complex eye could be formed by natural selection, though inseparable by our imagination, should not hmm. be considered as subversive of the theory. How a nerve comes to be sensitive to light hardly concerns us, and that's what I want to stop about here. How hmm. a nerve comes to be sensitive to light hardly concerns us more than how life itself originated. So in this word, in this sentence here, what he's saying, yes, I, I know that the nerve came to be sensitive to light because of what he explained that might be gradual uh, process that the, uh, the possessor of this organism needed. So it gradually changed in a way, or what he's saying is an evolution to reach the perfect function that we have right now. But if you want to ask me how this come to be sensitive to light, I cannot be concerned about that because I'm in, I cannot even explain how life came into existence. Hmm. So that's just a kind of the uh, statement that he's making here that he cannot explain it. He cannot explain that still. Uh, there is no counter argument here about what he said previously. Actually, he is yeah. carrying on his kind of doubtness about what's happening and he cannot explain it at all. At least he had the integrity to um, yes to, to confess uh, the limits of, of human knowledge. Many yeah. of the modern atheists or the modern naturalists do not have the integrity to confess this and they will just keep arguing. It happened by evolution. It's steps, one step at a time. And they completely yes. ignore the fact that Whenever there is one step more or less at, a con at an integrated design, it will actually spoil the design, <laughs> not any other way. <laughs> because yeah. if you need one small part of the system to change, the whole other parts of the system need to compensate for the change. Yeah. And this is unfathomable to occur by, by chance or just by a blind process. So, Absolutely. A blind process creating a seeing eye, just as yeah. ridiculous as it might but, uh, <laughs> sound. This is, a, 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 I, I, I'm not going to show this video, but this is a very interesting, uh, maybe we leave it on the um, comments on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the video, so mm -hmm. uh, they can watch it later. But this is yeah. a, a very interesting video for someone who's actually based in the UK here, and he was yeah. in specifically uh, speaking about evolution of the eye. I want you to watch this video, it's not very long, it will take you around 12 minutes or 13 minutes to watch it. And it's mm -hmm. available on YouTube. The link is here. And yeah. uh, this guy was completely evolutionist. He doesn't believe in any creation. And I want you to show you to, to see how he is explaining how the eye developed and how the eye of the different creatures evolved and as in, his, in what he thinks what happened to be the perfect eye of the human being now over one billion years. And how he explained that the eye got interrupted at a certain time, so it doesn't continue to evolute. And um, I will just show you that here, this is one of the counter arguments to his theory. This is a, 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 a trilobite. Trilobite, exactly right. This is a yeah. trilobite. 500 million years ago, this trilobite has this very advanced eye, which is only present in the bee and the uh, flies now, dragonflies. So this is a compound eye with multiple different lenses. And this happened in 500 million years ago. And this went into extinction 250 million years ago. So across the what they argue about the evolution, this came through. And it actually had a very compound eye. And it went into extinction. So how come across this... Uh, evolution process something that complex came in and then disappeared and what can explain that this is only one thing of course i didn't go into this single bit but i think uh, it it's it worth watching that and there's another video and, which is and I this really... and, and this and this came into being very early and there is no previous i actually have a little image of it here if you would like to, to yeah. have a look at it here, here is here is a trilobite eye just like the 
you see how 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 it is and uh, yes. subhanallah it is something that just occurred in the fossil record no no precursors to it it just appears and uh, and 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 what's the explanation for this subhanallah the, the gradualism they are talking about just doesn't exist so uh, exactly and that thanks. was really uh, subhanallah interesting that something came 500 million years ago and disappeared like 250 million years ago across the gradation that happened. So why the gradation mm -hmm. stopped here and what started again? Why it's yeah. so compound? SubhanAllah, there's nothing yeah. that really can... Uh... Explain this. Yes, exactly. So uh, the, this is another video which I really recommend because this guy is uh, amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is Nasser... Uh, uh, but this video, I can't remember his complete name now, but uh, he mm. actually made one of the best videos I've seen uh, uh, trying to uh, 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 discuss what Richard Dawkins was saying, because Richard Dawkins went into a very extreme argument that even the design of the retina was not as it should be. So I want you to watch this very, very nice video. And again, we can leave the link. It doesn't take long. It's, I think it's another 10 minutes. So if you watch okay. Richard Dawkins and then you watch this one and his counter argument, and then you will say, subhanAllah, uh, actually, uh, it is just the, uh, the, the clue that was uh, 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 left to... Uh... The answer is... So, yeah, uh, are we done with the presentation, Dr. Ahmad? We are, yes. So yes. I was just, just saying we are here to just follow the steps, find the clues, uh, go across what we know, so we reach to where we don't know, and then we take it a step forward. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged the human beings to uh, find the, the clues that they have and they study it more. And they think all oh, what happens sometimes is to the benefit of us because as some of the argument they keep saying all the time that uh, if I don't have explanation for it, I will still keep looking for the explanation. But don't give me God as ex ex explanation. And in the process of doing that, they are just giving us more clues and more beauty. And this is the, that's what happened. This is, that's meant to be. So we shouldn't be kind of sometimes annoyed with that. This, uh, this is actually works for a reason all the time. So uh, thanks for everybody who is uh, denying because you uh, <laughs> you keep drawing attention. <laughs> yes, exactly. And when you draw attention to what you are denying, we find more clues. Yeah. So uh, uh, um, let me ask you this. As a person who has spent um, decades studying the eye, um, uh, how how much how much doubt what is the probability in your mind as a uh, um professional and an academic who has studied this that this might have just occurred by chance and by random mutation and natural selection just by chance we have eyes uh, what is what is the percentage is is, is there a number that <laughs> you can put on this um i i, I mean uh, it's, uh, of course, it is. It is none. I mean, I, I think it is nil, right? It is for me. It is none. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, never, never happened, and it will kind of. We cannot explain it all by the way. The 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 the, the father of their kind of the study, and I think all the scientists, it, we, they will come to any organ in the body and stare, stand still. But and when it comes to the eye, as we can see, it's it is a It's something beyond. I mean, I'm, as I mentioned at the very early beginning. I'm biased. I, I look into the eye most of the day, every day. But uh, sometimes we forget the beauty as we get used to it. But uh, yeah. if we step back, backwards a bit, and then we look at it again, the beauty never stops. And um, it, it is kept. Yeah. It is maintained. It is there for you to use all the time. Just wake up, open your eyes. It is clean. It is. It is beautiful. It is wet, not dry. It, it is everything. I mean, it is. It is your eye. God give it to you. Uh, SubhanAllah, very true. And even when you are wearing uh, some eyeglasses or even uh, 
You know, like sunglasses. <laughs> After some time, you you take them off yeah. and you start rubbing them because they are getting uh, bad and uh, they lose their transparency and they get scratched and they don't fix themselves and they don't maintain themselves and yeah. they don't change their focal length and they don't do all. They don't have those small muscles changing them yeah. and and they are not with this resolution and they're not that beautiful. Uh, yeah, exactly right. Once you look exactly. to the human face and you you're struck by this thing that looks like a jewel and it has colors and it has yeah. you know, it does have a and poses and goes yeah. around and yeah, it's an engineering marvel. And uh, I think we give us a teaser about what you are. You going to explain how it works to us next time? No, it's just now we we kind of realized how it was created and uh, the, the structure. Now mm -hmm. the big part of it, how it functions, to give you what you what you need. So. You want so next, vision and you want yeah. it to be navigating across the world. So you want your eyes to be working. So that's maybe just get some principles of the how it keeps uh, its function to be clear and give you what you need to do every day. So next time we will be, uh, th that will be, uh, will you promise us to be here with us next Sunday to explain this to us, inshallah? <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> I just maybe need to work on it. Maybe the week after then. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the, the Sunday yeah. after the next, yeah. uh, sure. we'll have uh, Dr. Ahmad Goma again with us, inshallah, explaining to us how the this beautiful eye that he explained to us today, uh, how it was um, formed, how it actually functions yeah. to capture yeah. the light and give us this image, this 3D image in 3D. So next time is... Uh, uh, how we, we have this. Yes, so he was speaking about yeah. the clarity and then we speak. About and, it. And great. So let's look at some um, uh, some of the comments. So we have here, uh, Yuri says, humans can only see 1% of the visible light spectrum, which means we can only see 1% of what is going on around. In other words, we are unable to see the vast 99% of the world we live in. Uh, take a moment to absorb that. The, uh, the majority of our existence is unseen. This is uh, one channel friend who is, I think he's is Shalom. So I think he's um, uh, Jewish. So, so Shalom, Ahmad, hope you're good. And thank you for that. So yes, so much we cannot see and we have this much arrogance actually. Uh, <laughs> Sabu says, uh, Alaikum as the spectrum that we have, yeah. Yeah. And we have actually Dr. Amar Arafa with us on the chat. So he says, marvelous and thank you, host. thank you. Uh, thank you. You're yeah. part of this, Sam. Um, yeah. <laughs> and um, he says again, and it is a whole other story when you look at how the eyes transmits emotions and expressions. Well, uh, great, uh, <laughs> great comment, actually, because it doesn't only take light in, it shows emotions out. Isn't that, uh, isn't that something? So, uh, yeah, uh, very smart comment here. So, um, uh, Dr. Ahmed, thank you very much. And um, uh, we'll be uh, waiting anxiously for the Sunday after next to hear more from you. And um, uh, we had uh, one hour of great uh, excitement. Thank you for sharing this knowledge. Thank you very and much for uh, working on that. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be here today. Thank you. Thanks to you and to everybody who has, uh, to everyone who has watched this, uh, please do share it with loved ones. I think that marveling on God's creation, on Allah's creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is one great way to um, strengthen one's faith and to, um, to have the scientific and the um, detailed knowledge um, to, to fend off things like what people like, uh, Richard Dawkins and others, and what even the father of evolution, Charles Darwin himself, said this, says this, you know, says, says that this thinking that the eye can can come by by chance or by natural selection is just absurd. It it was absurd at his time, and today it's even more absurd because we have learned more. And the more we learn, yeah. the more we recognize. Well, that's exactly that's exactly the case. Yeah. So so you agree with me that science brings us closer to God and closer to Allah, not the other way around. Yeah. So with that, uh, I thank everybody who has been on this live stream. Please do share this. Uh, remember to like the video because it helps the YouTube algorithm to spread it. And um, uh, remember also to uh, maybe you would like to join me on the Telegram. Um, group so you can get instant notifications 
about uh, live events on Tuesday inshallah we will have the third episode of the marvels of the Quran this time we will be talking about the formation of the stars and how the Quran addresses this issue and we compare that to the latest scientific discoveries and observations of the cosmos so um, um, a final comment man's man says thank you for the stream and thank you for being here uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah peace yes. be upon you all uh, thank you again dr ahmed yes. and uh, i'll be putting the extra now and uh, we'll be seeing you all again soon inshallah yes.